and Anna is next. And what I got to say is, I can talk all day about policies, but she has to implement them on the ground. So she's going to give me a little talking to you. So. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. First of all, I just want to thank uh, Dr. Purcell and uh, Lynn Parker and the staff for inviting me to be here. One of the first things that I think is important is that we include the voice of the child care community, the early educators and the administrators who are in this field. And this is one big opportunity and way we can, you can do that. Because not too often do we get to come and speak in a, in a setting as this to be able to share with you. So of course I'm going to be nervous because I don't usually get to do this. So forgive me if I do. But I, day, I wanted to really say, let's jump, jump, because that is the morning song at our, you know, to be able to do with our program, because we want to get everybody jumping and moving and make sure that you know we're being active and really getting uh, staff involved in that process too. Community school for people under six, where, which is where I serve as a director, and I've been there for 25 years as of December 16th coming up. Uh, we have been a nonprofit child care center uh, with a focus on assuring that every that our child care center provides quality child care, early care and education for all children, but especially for low and moderate income families who don't have the opportunity to be in five star programs. Community school is a five star licensed program. We've been nationally accredited in, uh, in the past and getting ready to go back through that process. Uh, but what we do find is that many of our children are not in high quality programs. And when you think about nutrition and physical activity, I think of it on the same level as a five star center. The same mindset that we are in in terms of one being at the lower level and five being at the highest is our mindsets as individuals in this work that we actually do. We are thinking about what level of our own education and knowledge do we have about what we want to happen? What level of commitment do we have to move our programs to the next step to be um, for uh, children to be healthy, for food to be provided that is healthy, to be able to provide uh, the resources that are available, to be able to provide the policies and practices that are in place so that we can accomplish our goal of reducing obesity. That is the mindset that I started to think about as I've sat here this morning in this process. Community school uh, has had the opportunity over the last, my 25 years, to be a part of some great things in the state of North Carolina. We've worked to have a framework of quality care and education. But because of that, uh, many programs like mine, who are four and five star centers, get the opportunity to to focus on their licensing standards, early learning standards that improve quality, that talk about nutrition and how we can improve it, that talk about physical activity. And those things have to happen at the policy level. We're part of the uh, Division of Child Development and Early Education. They make those policy changes. And uh, sometimes those policy changes don't always take effect for everybody. That's why there's a one and a five star rating. But we have to keep pushing so that it doesn't just affect those that, that are at the upper level, but at the bottom. Um, we, are, we have the quality rating system, uh, improvement system in North Carolina, who looks at those standards, who looks at how to improve them, monitor them, uh, to be accountable and uh, provide funding and technical assistance for those uh, standards. That's important. There have been studies that talk about the validity of the, of the standards and how They've met the needs of child care programs and family child care homes. But what happens is it takes so long sometimes for the studies that we do to actually become policy and practice. Um, excuse me one second. So it takes a minute before some of the studies that we have uh, done to take effect. But sometimes there are things that come along and I had an opportunity to go on the website for Obesity Solutions and, and look at this round table and, and what this group stands for. And one of the things that stood out for me uh, was the multi-sector uh, multi uh, and cross-sector focus. And we put, I have participated in preventing obesity by design, which has been done by Blue Cross Blue Shield over eight years ago. Our child care program improved this outdoor learning environment. Even during that time in the state of North Carolina, we actually had to have a group that was doing outdoor learning. That outdoor learning group had to work together to put policies in place to help 
um, programs understand the value of outdoor learning and outdoor play. And finally, that got into licensing and practices. You know, in, in this past year, um, since 2015, we've had the opportunity to participate in SHAPE NC. It's the North Carolina Partnership for Young Children, SHAPE NC, Healthy Start for, uh, for Young Children program that Blue Cross Blue Shield had sponsored and been, and been partners with the North Carolina Partnership for Children, which has over 100 Smart Start um, partners across the state. But in this particular situation, it brings together your local partnership along with a teacher and a director to be involved in that process. And through that process, we've uh, had the opportunity to be involved with people like Be Active, uh, Kids, Go Knapsack, uh, and to really focus on, and the, uh, focus on all of those things that will help to improve our programs. So it's that private, um, nonprofit uh, process and all of the people being involved in that process that's made a change. And I saw the difference that that made. So if you look at our center for, for the Go Knapsack, you know, how the nutrition standards have changed. We put in place to change, to increase our whole grains, to add more fruits and vegetables. And much of that we were doing, but we still found ways that we needed to change. We've done, changed our menus to, and we've uh, started buying more organic foods. Now we still need the, uh, we have the challenge of finding those places that we can find the best products that are reasonable in cost for child care programs. Because the cost of food for us, is, that's over, over a $30,000 deal every single, you know, $60,000 pretty much for food for my program of 50. You know, so the cost for child care programs is high. So money is always a factor in the early, early care and education field. You know, Be Active Kids actually came into our programs and taught teachers how to do more physical activity. Yes, you're doing great things, but this is some other things you can add. The teamwork that we had as a part of this project allowed us to create some activities to work with other child care programs across the state to see what they were, do what they were doing. We planted beautiful gardens. We've got trees, we've got trike pads. We work with the women of the, uh, of the world to have uh, some things done on our playgrounds. Uh, but now we have trike pads that are circular so the children can ride. And, but the cost, again, is the big issue, being able to buy the things that we need to have, being able to buy uh, the toys and things that will help them, help them as well. We took down all the playground equipment on my playground. Um, and we have changed this to be a more natural learning environment. That's what we wanted to have. I saw an environment much like the one that I grew up in, where we could climb some trees and run around and, and, and ride the bikes and do all those things that would allow children to engage with each other, chase and run after each other, as opposed to sitting down and not doing some of those things. And that's what the Shape and See project has done for us this year. We also had the opportunity to change our practices around breastfeeding. You know, we've been doing, we've always been a, a breastfeeding, breastfeeding friendly center but now we want to do a little more. We had a space that wasn't nice. Uh, you know, you could go in there, but it wasn't very comfortable. We changed that space. It's now called Serenity Place, but it's a more enlightening place uh, for seating for a couple of parents or just for one, a place for reading and relaxing, a place for staff to even sit down and, and relax. It, it is a more inviting place that wasn't there before, and it lets families know that we are here for you to have a more relaxing and opp uh, opportune time to spend time with your child, both not just for breastfeeding, but just if you just want to read a book. So that's a part of that process that we've done. We are so pleased to see the changes that have resulted as a part of the Child and Adult Food Program. There have, we've been a part of that program for since the existence of our school. But, you know, and we're beyond some of those practices. Because when you think about, you know, reducing sugars and, you know, not having juice but once a, once a day, we only have juice once a week. <laughs> you know, two ounces for the infants, uh, for the toddlers and five for the uh, preschoolers. So our standards of thinking are a lot different in many ways. But when you think about other child care programs, they're all on different planes of, of how they're thinking about this process. Their abilities to meet the goals of uh, getting where you are is different because many of them, uh, as I said, like with the one star, do not have the resources. Five star sometimes don't have the resources. And when you think about teachers who are going through this process, I, I don't know if you can see, I'm wearing a, a Fitbit on my arm. I, I actually have on one around my waist because we've been participating in a, a Care to be Fit project with UNC. It is projects like that that have been a part, that we've been able to be a part of that have helped our program as well. 
So while we've been doing shape and see and participating in all of this wonderful gardening and growing and bringing that food to the classroom to eat and to our table and to all the classrooms as a whole, we were able to serve a full meal from the garden, you know, and we hope to continue to do that. We have spinach and beets and kale and, uh, you know, cucumbers, strawberries and blueberries. You think about all of that wonderful stuff I just used to go out in the garden and get when I was coming up. All of that is in the center. But then when we've added certain resources such as this project, this project said they wanted to see how teachers were moving and they wanted to, you know, evaluate that process. So we wore our belts for a week and they tested that. Then we put on our Fitbits for six weeks and we got engaged. It encouraged us to walk. We could see it on our online app. We can see it on my telephone. I can show you, with, you know, how many steps I've done today and I need to go do some more. The goal for me is 10,000 steps a day, but we got to the point where teachers were doing 20,000 steps, 25,000 steps, and then it feels bad not to do them. So, but one of the things that came out of this project for physical activity was that we needed to do more physical activity with children. The children needed to have the goal was they had to have four adult-led physical activities. State of North Carolina, the rule is two. They put it in our rules and regulations two years ago. Children needed to have, you know, adults need to be with children, at least two 15-minute activities of uh, adult-led activities, only two. However, in this project, we have four. So now our infants are doing two, our toddlers are doing three, and our preschoolers are doing four adult-led physical activities. So that keeps everybody moving. And when we have this, have our Fitbits on, the teachers are not only focused on what they need to do, while they're doing that, they're helping the children to actually be able to move and be physically fit. And the competitive spirit that has resulted as a part of that has even been greater. So you see everybody trying to get a step, you know, some steps ahead and really race into that project process and doing that even more. So for childcare programs, you know, there are often things that we don't have. I looked on uh, Debbie's list about the child care health consultants. That was something that we had in Orange County, which is the county in which I work. We don't have that anymore. Some counties still have that. But the need to have a person like that on, you know, in your community to be able to help um, providers, uh, to be able to think through some of the health issues is really important. The need for the medical profession. Um, of all medical professions to be a part of this process to help families is important. You know, I actually worked with a physician this summer who I connected my staff to who was a chiropractor. We worked with him about providing corrective adjustments to our bodies, to our nerves, nervous systems and spine so that we can move appropriately and be able to stand and walk and do the things we need to do. We're a staff of going up and down and that is movement but it's hurtful movement. movement. So he helped us to be able to adjust our bodies and do that, but he also taught us about good nutrition and physical health. And he put on programs like the 10-minute workout and workshops and seminars that we could attend. That was important. We carried all of that over into our classrooms. We carried the workshops that were done through Shape and See into our classrooms. We had parents come to our parent workshops on physical activity and how to work with their children. Uh, and that was really important for us too. So all these wonderful things community school has been a part of, but just know that all those resources are not there for children and families everywhere. And when we think about the field, we need to think about how we can broaden that. Thank you so much, Anna.